Ernest Goes to Jail. Directed by John Cherry. Released on April 6, 1990. It was the fourth highest ranking film at the box office at the time. Just under Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Pretty Woman, and The Hunt for Red October. It beat out films like Driving Miss Daisy and Kenneth Branagh's Henry V. Proving that what audiences really want isn't Shakespeare, but the comedic stylings of the late great Jim Vaughn, who interestingly enough studied Shakespeare at the Border Theater in Arlington, Virginia. But before we go any further, I would like to take a moment to thank my brave heroes of the Empire for their support last weekend, particularly since I was a day late with my upload. Captain Matthew Nicholson, and I'm just happy to be a stormtrooper, Adam Jordan. Your generosity means the world to me, and thank you for helping keep this channel going. It is greatly appreciated, my friends. But now, let's start this review in earnest, shall we? Jim Vaughn, who my younger viewers will recognize as the voice of Slinky from Toy Story, plays Ernest P. Whirl, a bungling bank janitor who works alongside a couple of Barney Five security guards named Chuck and Bobby, as well as Charlotte Sparrow, his supportive co-worker and friend, who wants to help the lovable moron fulfill his lifelong ambition of becoming a bank clerk. And I always thought from her voice to her appearance, Barbara Tyson, who played Charlotte, would have made a great April O'Neil. Did you read those books that I gave you? I tried, but they were real tough. There weren't any pictures, and the print was real small. Ernest, you've got to work hard if you want to get ahead. I know, but I get discouraged. And besides, Mr. Pendlesmite's not going to give me a chance. Ernest, you got to believe in yourself. You've got to have faith in the system. And considering both films came out in 1990, she would have been the perfect age for the part. Fittingly enough, however, these days, Barbara Tyson narrates Tyson chicken commercials. I have a lot of fond memories of this film from when I was a youngling. Ernest is essentially a cartoon character brought to life. Not only does his house look like a wily e. coyote contraption, or a giant game of mousetrap, his signature brand of rubber-faced slapstick-style humor makes him the family-friendly Mayberry Jim Carrey. Hey, Vern. It sure is hot up here, Vern. I bet you'd like a cold, smooth, mellow yellow right now, would you? Yeah, I just bet you would. You know, Vern, there's nothing like a good old cold mellow yellow when you're all hot and sweaty. I think it sure beats that Mountain Dew. <laughs> You know what that sound means in Russia, Vern? Empty. Vern! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. When Ernest, an upwardly mobile American citizen, is selected for jury duty, the criminal on trial notices he is the spitting image of Felix Nash, the crime boss of the prison, which admittedly is a tough break for both of them. Although, shouldn't Nash have a goatee since he's essentially the mirror universe version of Ernest? Turns out the villain's plan is to pull the old switcheroo, leaving Ernest to serve Nash's sentence, leaving the imposter free to take over Ernest's life, put the moves on his girl, and toss his dog into a trash can. Utilizing the classic doppelganger story trope, the film is basically redneck prince and the pauper, except the prince is a death row inmate, and the pauper is like if Goofy was a janitor. Or perhaps it's more like the prisoner of Zenda, since we're dealing with jail. But speaking of the slammer, all of the prison scenes in the film were shot on location at the Tennessee State Penitentiary. So if you ever wanted to see a movie location in person, all you have to do is commit a crime in Nashville, and you're all set. As our hapless hero is told he must act like Nash or his loved ones on the outside will be harmed, we are treated to several of Jim Barney's impressions as he tries to find the right voice to portray the escaped convict, including an impression of Sylvester Stallone. Hey, yo, Murdoch, you're the guy that shot my brother, right? And I'm the guy that's going to shoot you, eh? All right. Now, the mention of the name Murdoch here was due to the fact that character actor Charles Napier, who played Murdoch in First Blood Part Two also plays the warden of the prison in this film. And I gotta say, whether he's playing an annoying space hippie in Star Trek, or a Cajun mercenary on The Incredible Hulk, 
Charles Napier has made a successful career out of being obnoxious in pretty much every role he's ever played. Yeah, don't be fair. Yeah, don't be fair. You stupid Cajun idiot! Hey! While Ernest is doing time, Redneck Rent-A-Cops Chuck and Bobby are hard at work updating the security systems of the bank to comedic effect. Fun fact, Gaylord Sartain, who played Chuck, graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and even worked as an assistant illustrator for renowned graphic artist Paul Davis. The son of the Tulsa Fire Marshal, Sartain began his film career on a local television program airing late-night B-movies with co-host Gary Busey. Yes, THE Gary Busey. Before he began working in commercials for Cardin and Cherry, the same company who employed Jim Barney. This ultimately led to them working together on the short-lived television series Haven It's Ernest in 1988, for which Varney won a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Performer in a Children's Series. One of the many things I loved about this film as a young man, beyond the slapstick humor, was the fact that in a shocking turn of events, Ernest essentially becomes a superhero at the end gaining his powers after being electrocuted for the umpteenth time. Now this gag goes all the way back to his early days doing commercials. Well, there's your problem right there, Vern. You see that little wire right there? Looks like it's got a little something. Lord, in it. As you can see here, this exact gag was carried over to the film. Well, there's my problem right there. And while I've heard some people complain that the plot of this film makes no sense, particularly Ernest's unlimited power, I just have this to say. One, if Barry Allen can get super speed by getting struck by lightning, my boy Ernest can shoot lightning like Palpatine after getting electrocuted. And two, it's an Ernest movie. If you want plot and world building, watch Lord of the Rings. The, uh, the Peter Jackson films, not this bullcrap new Amazon show. I don't know what's wrong with studios these days. Is everyone who works here a moron? In the end, Ernest Goes to Jail is a light-hearted film that appeals to the youngling in all of us. Filled to the brim with slapstick humor in the vein of the Three Stooges and classic Wile E. Coyote cartoons. I vividly remember as a child watching this film as we ate pizza, fried chicken, and potato wedges on a Friday night after my father had returned home from a hard day's work at a job site and then going out for ice cream after the movie was over. Watching this film again brought back a lot of fond memories of warm summer nights from a simpler time, a time from my childhood I treasure to this very day. So for my personal nostalgia, I give Ernest Goes to Jail Four out of five Death Stars. The force is strong with this one. This has been Vader Reviews. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And follow me on Twitter, at Vader Reviews. Join the Empire today. You do not yet realize your importance. Share these videos, and together we will rule the internet. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side. Know what I mean?